Here in the Western world, people buy pills, antioxidants, supplements. It's a huge business. But are any of these things actually necessary? And there's experts that tell you there are superfoods that are just bursting with nutrition and that you really need these in order to live as long as possible. Is that true? Okay, this whole subject about nutrients comes up often, but it's been coming up more recently again because of the so-called potato diet. Dr. McDougall often talks about a study that was done in 1925 where they took a young couple and put them on an all-potato diet for six months. Uh, that's all they ate was potatoes, except that they were, got too skinny because they were being very active, so they added fat. They added vegetable oil with those potatoes just for energy, no actual nutrition. And at the end of six months, they found they were in excellent health, that they hadn't gotten tired of the potato diet. People have been inspired by Dr. McDougall in this story. They've been trying the all potato diet themselves, and they've been getting some media attention for doing that. We're always being told to cut the carbs if we want to lose weight, but here's a man who's bucking the trend, losing 34 kilos on a potato only diet. I'm feeling amazing. Yeah, it's been, it's been a really good year, and uh, I've lost a lot of weight, and uh, and I'm sleeping better. Andrew Taylor has been eating up to four kilos of potatoes every day for the past three months and insists it's the key to weight loss. Doctors are rallying behind him, insisting the diet is safe. So here is Andrew, the guy from Australia in the news piece we just saw. Uh, Dr. McDougall had him on his webinar show last week. Andrew says he saw a video on my YouTube channel which introduced him to Dr. McDougall and the idea of doing the potato diet. And uh, Andrew says he's lost around 80 pounds in three months. He says he's cured his depression, he sleeps much better, and is experiencing a lot of other benefits. And here's a lovely girl who calls herself High Carb Hannah, who also got a lot of attention doing Dr. McDougall's potato-only diet. She did it for just 30 days. I think she said she lost six pounds and learned a number of interesting things doing this mono diet. So people have been seeing this and seeing these news reports and they've been asking, uh, you know, is would I suffer some nutritional deficiency by going on an all potato diet? If I ate a mono diet, a mono diet means just one food, eating the same food. It could be bananas, it could be potatoes. Uh, but people are wondering, you know, eating just potatoes, am I going to have any nutrient deficiencies, nutritional deficiencies? Let's take a look at what Dr. Doug Lyle, who works with Dr. McDougall and also at the True North Health Clinic, has to say about encountering nutritional deficiencies with this kind of diet. It isn't actually necessary to do a Spartan mono diet in order to sort of get yourself on track. Um, but if people want to do such a thing, you know, have at it. There will not be any nutrient deficiency issues. People are not going to wind up with nutrient deficiency problems on a mono diet like that, probably ever. You, you could essentially eat steamed potatoes and live on steamed potatoes and probably not wind up with a nutrient deficiency of any kind, maybe for years, if ever. So um, th that is the least of our concerns. So some people are not just concerned about getting a nutritional deficiency if you had a potato-only diet. They wonder whether if they eat a healthy starch-based diet, are they going to develop some kind of nutritional deficiency? This is a question that Dr. McDougall himself gets from time to time. They have um, been following the, your McDougall program for four years and have lost 50 pounds. And uh, this person doesn't eat any added fat. And the question is, is it really safe to never eat nuts, seeds, or avocados? Absolutely. All the fat you need is in the basic starches. Um, there's, there's never been a case of fat or fatty acid deficiency ever reported on a natural diet. Uh, the only case of fatty acid deficiency I've ever uh, uh, encountered was when <clears throat> in the 1930s uh, they invented formulas for babies and the babies started getting fat on these high fat formulas you know, to replace breast milk. And so what the uh, uh, doctors recommended was we take the fat out of the baby's formulas and these babies developed a fatty acid deficiency. Uh, cracks in their skin. I mean, it was uh, a problem. But fatty acid deficiency or fat deficiency has never occurred on any natural diet ever. Our uh, requirements for fat are uh, less than 1% of the calories. Uh, uh, vegetable foods uh, contain about uh, half their calories as essential fat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are corn is uh, 
about 10% fat. Potatoes are 1% fat. Beans, peas, and lentils about 4% fat. Loads of fat. You'll never see a case of fatty acid deficiency on natural foods. Right. Uh, if you add nuts, seeds, avocados, uh, I don't think it's unhealthy, but they're 90% fat. What reasonable person would think that if you ate a significant amount of food that's 90% fat, it wouldn't affect your skin, which you'll notice in just a couple of days becomes uh, softer, so to speak, oilier, and uh, wouldn't affect your body fat. Uh, the studies done showing that fat doesn't make, or excuse me, nuts and seeds are nuts in particular. By the way, most of them are paid for by the nut industry. Right. Uh, the studies that show that uh, limit the nut intake to uh, one ounce of nuts a day or less, or they also, as a part of the experiment, decrease the calorie intake from other foods. This is fraudulent science. Uh, it's paid for by the nut industry, and people buy into it because... People love to hear good news about their bad habits. They do. They yeah. really do. So tell me, like, and that not, not they do not eat uh, uh, unprocessed nuts. They hear nuts are good, so they buy a can of these salted, greasy almonds and say, see, look what I'm doing. I'm eating nuts. That's good for me. Uh, industry winning, winning. Someone says here, should I at least have my omega-3 fatty acid levels checked like my doctor suggests, and take DHA supplements. No. no. I, wish I, I, I wish I could use the word bullshit on this. <laughs> Some people would get upset with me, so I won't do that. Well, well. You know, it's just absolutely not. You shouldn't have, and you shouldn't be taking DHA. You're making, you're making all, all the fat, essential fat, elongated essential fats like EPA and DHA, you make it from alpha linoleic acid, you know, which is the basic ALA is made by plants. But sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, it's the, it gets so frustrating. It does. That I have to put up with this kind of nonsense from people. Again, if you're looking for the magic bullet, the thing that you missed, the new science that's going to come out and save you, and then you're not going to buy into this. Right. If you're looking for the truth, the truth is everywhere. This is not a video about nuts. I might, I might do a video about nuts later. But Dr. McDougall makes a number of interesting and, and really valid points about the research surrounding nuts. All right, now we're going to look at a process called nutrient recycling, which explains why you're not going to get deficient eating these healthy diets. Speaking of nutrients, like um, there is some differences in opinion. I've talked to some people that when you know I have a starch-based diet and people can live on potatoes for years and that kind of attitude, and then there's the nutri nutrient or nutritarian. I mean, there's Dr. Furman, Dr. Uh, Gregor, to some extent. If yeah. you go on chronometer, for example, there'll be this thing like selenium and you need a Brazil nut every day. And I kind of ask myself, well, what are like a lot of people around the world done in the past when there wasn't Brazil nuts sitting there? And yeah. so what's your take on some of these nutrients that people seem to think they have to have a nut or something to get? You know, uh, a great motivational speaker in Southern California, a legendary man by the name of Jim Rohn in the 1980s, uh, had a phrase. He says, people major in minor things. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is, this issue of nutrient density and concern about nutrients is absolutely minor league, small time peanuts, and people need to get over it. It is not an important issue. The, uh, you need to understand that your intuition here, Will, is exactly right. That people around the world very often lived in ecological circumstances where the diets were extremely narrow. And um, they did not have, they weren't able to walk into a grocery store and have 200 different bunch of produce from all over the world or grown in hothouses. You know, people, people very often had very, very narrow diets. And it turns out that what happens the body, when it faces a diet uh, that is very low in some given nutrient or vitamin or mineral, uh, what it will do is that the genes have mechanisms to essentially recycle those nutrients very, very efficiently. So it, it is not necessary to be at the levels that if we were to say, oh, well, all human beings have level X of a given nutrient and Therefore, they see that the RDA believes that we need X amount uh, of this to eat, and then you're not eating it, that this is a bad thing. It's ludicrous. The truth is, is that your genes beautifully now realize 
that they are living in an environment of lower concentration of that nutrient and they start to recycle that nutrient more efficiently. And it's simple. This is child's play for the genetic code. And um, so this is a this is majoring in minor things. People need to know that for every individual who has their health compromised behind some vitamin or mineral deficiency, there are a thousand people who have their health compromised because of dietary excesses. And so it's it's not even close. I would tell people never worry about a deficiency. If you're trying to sell pills and supplements to somebody, you want to ignore this whole concept of nutrient recycling. Um, you got to kind of push it to the side and, and offer the pill instead. So why is it so easy to scare people into buying pills or telling them, oh, you have to eat, you know, this food and that food and eat more and more of it every day? What is it about people that makes them so vulnerable to this kind of tactic? People have a natural tendency, of the, I believe it's embedded into the neural coding of humans, to worry about deficiency. And let me tell you why it is that I think that they do. That if you watch a young mother or father with their, with their infant children, the conversation between the mother and father is about, did he get enough to eat? Did he eat? Did she eat? Did she get enough? Did, in other words, there is an incessant fascination with making sure that that infant gets enough food. This tells us, if we didn't already know, or from thinking about it, that the threat of death by starvation has been an enormously important problem for our species, and it's an enormously important problem for all species. So the, the concept uh, to the human mind of deficiency is one that has that is front and center in terms of people's considerations and worries. That comes naturally to people. What does not come naturally to people is any worry about dietary excess. No human beings ever died of dietary excesses. This is not a problem of natural history of any species at any time. It was never the problem. It is only a problem today. Now, if we actually autopsy people, we find that they're dying early of diseases of dietary excess. Nobody's dying of diseases of dietary deficiency. Okay, so the, uh, so the, the concern on the part of these doctors, these doctors are uh, have already already know the big picture. So whether it's Dr. Furman or Dr. Gregor, these guys are smart guys. They already know the big picture, but now what's happening is they're wandering into the weeds of these very small details. Uh, could they be correct in some ways? Could there be one in 17,000 uh, patients that winds up with a vitamin or mineral deficiency that would have been better off with a Brazil nut a day? Uh, possibly, even likely that that could be true. But let's keep focused on you. And you are likely not to be one of those 17,000 people that doesn't have a little enzyme that allows you to recycle uh, that particular nutrient if you wind up with a nutrient deficient situation. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you are likely to be a normal stock human that will never face a vitamin deficiency problem in your life uh, because you've got normal recycling machinery. So as a result, the last thing on earth that anybody needs to be worried about is deficiencies. The... Um, there is one exception, perhaps two. And the exception is in the modern environment, if you choose to be a vegan, which is an unnatural diet, by the way, it is not the natural diet of our history. We actually believe it is a superior diet to the diet of our natural history. As our humanoid ancestors went from being a vegan uh, to adapting to the utilization of meat uh, in order to be able to traverse uh, larger expanses of the globe. So by, uh, if you're going to be a wandering primate and you're going to be willing to leave your homeland and cross rivers and you're not sure where your next meal is going to be coming from, then it makes sense to widen your palate. And this species did widen its palate to include hunting, uh, but it was an additional, it was not an original diet for the species, it was an additional diet for the species. And as a result of that, yeah, the the uh, our digestive process has co-opted machinery uh, in order to allow that process to happen and utilize this food, but it's a little bit rough. We can see that animal food is a little bit rough on people uh, relative to plant food, and that's why when we get higher concentrations of it, we start seeing things like cardiovascular disease and cancer at higher rates because it's just a little bit rougher fuel. We are perfectly designed to be a vegan, and yet it's going to turn out that if you are a vegan in a very uh, antiseptic environment where all the fruits and vegetables are washed, 
and you do not eat any animal food, which therefore you're not eating anything with bacterial contamination, which uh, animal food is full of it. Uh, from that bacterial contamination in animal food, you'll get vitamin B12 being formed. And as a result of that, um, you were designed by nature to be eating some of that animal food with its bacterial contamination. And so you lost the ability to recycle brilliantly the vitamin B12 in a deficiency situation. So therefore, it's uh, because it was so ubiquitous. There's so much vitamin B12 in anything that you, any diet of a normal people uh, that might have had 10% of its calories from animal food. If you choose to eat a really pristine diet uh, of vegan matter, and it turns out that that vegan material also doesn't even have any dirt on it because it's been washed, then you could wind up with a vitamin B12 deficiency, and it makes sense to take a vitamin B12 pill. Okay, That's it. That's where the evidence, that's the end of the evidence. Now, the other issue would be uh, vitamin D, which there are people now that spend an awful lot of time indoors and don't spend very much time out of doors. And so there's some controversy over whether or not some people might be better off with vitamin D supplementation. I, I believe that it's, that's a mixed bag on that evidence and it's not all that clear. I do know that you're probably better off with more sun than most people are getting. And that's probably how we ought to do it. Um, but aside from that, everything else on the table is minor things. And we need to not be your, – your worries about those things should be one one thousand of the worries that you have about dietary excesses. And so uh, that, that's where I come down on that. And I, I think that's what people's focus needs to be. It turns out that nutrient recycling probably extends life. It's probably, if your body is forced to recycle nutrients, it's probably gonna live longer. You're gonna live longer. That's because evolutionary biologists now believe or are theorizing that nutrient restriction actually puts a stress on your body that makes you live longer. Here's a study that's interesting. It's called Very Low Nutrient Diet May Offer Anti-Aging Clues. And uh, it goes here to say that severe nutrient restriction rather than calorie restriction is the reason for longevity. And it goes on to say here, dietary restriction does, however, lead to increased rates of cellular recycling and repair mechanisms in the body, Adler pointed out. Based on this, the team's new theory is that this cellular recycling of nutrients has evolved to help animals continue to reproduce when food is scarce. They require less food to survive because stored nutrients in the cells can be recycled and reused. It is this effect that could account for the increased lifespan of laboratory animals on very low nutrient diets because increased cellular recycling reduces deterioration and the risk of cancer, suggested the team. Obviously, I don't endorse animal studies. They're horrific and uh, frequently yield data that's useless. But Talking about it doesn't make them not have happened, and because there's a lot of data in this area, I am going to talk about it just a little bit. But basically what they're finding out is to make an organism live longer, restrict nutrition. They used to think it was restri restrict calories, but it's actually the nutrition you want to restrict. Uh, that kind of flies in the face of what people think. People usually think, you know, more is better. If this is a good vitamin, if this is a good antioxidant, I should eat more of that, or I should take pills of that, but that's, turns out, that may be just the opposite of the way it works. And really, it looks like we're seeing the same thing in the blue zones. The blue zones are those areas where there's more centenarians, more people over age 100 than in other cultures. And when we look at the diet and the lifestyle and they, they study these people to try and figure out, you know, why are they living so much longer than other people, we find the same sort of thing in their diet. So we're seeing a sort of nutrition restriction effect in these starch-based, high-starch diets of the longest-lived cultures. For example, the Okinawans, who eat about 85% starch, that's sweet potatoes with some rice and grains, and only 6% fat, these people live longer than anyone else on the planet. Their diet, their starch-based diet, ends up giving them about 200 calories less a day than people living on mainland Japan. They're eating a whole lot less meat and fish, just in fact a teeny amount, less than 2% of their calories. They eat pork uh, for celebrations, but they stew it for three days. They boil off all the fat, basically. They eat very little fish, but they're on this very heavily starch-based diet. Well, we know that starch is about one calorie per gram. That's how much calories there is in starch. Very little, whereas meat 
and dairy is usually about four calories and sugar is four calories and fat is nine calories for gram per gram. So they're eating a very calorie light diet. They get filled up that way. They're getting adequate nutrition, but they're not eating nuts. They eat very little nuts. They're not eating sort of the superfoods that we're told are, uh, you know, crucial to longevity. And what happens is, is they are engaging, it appears, more nutritional recycling um, because of that diet style. And, you know, the result is, just like all these animals, they're living a lot longer. I like to think of it where, you know, when you go to the gym, you stress your muscles, you lift weights, and uh, you put stress on them, and then your muscles grow and you get healthier, you get more fit that way. Same thing, if you're not getting necessarily all the nutrition, but you're getting, you know, adequate most of the time, but not always, um, you're kind of stressing your cells. Now the cells have got to get to work and become more efficient in recycling uh, the nutrients that are there. And this makes you stronger too. This makes you able to live longer so that you're sure to reproduce in an environment where there may not be enough food. So the take home message that I get is eat adequate nutrition, but don't eat, you know, super nutrition. That's not necessary. That might even be counterproductive. Definitely avoid supplements. Supplements have been shown to shorten your life, to promote cancer. This is a really big thing that's, that's coming out. So I want to be totally clear that I am not advocating calorie restriction. I'm not advocating counting calories or even really being aware, just being aware that you don't need superfoods. You don't need supplements. You don't need a lot of things to uh, try to make sure you have enough of this and enough of that. That's not the way it is. Your body knows what it's doing. It knows how to make the most of what you're getting. Okay, see you next time. Thanks.